Every year on the RSC, or what we call the Remote Support Center, we get lots of calls before planting season. A lot of times these are the same calls, and what I'm hoping to do here in this session is to give you some ideas as to how to solve some of those problems ahead of time and making your planting season more productive. There are three main areas that we deal with quite a bit, and one is uh, the guest row uh, problems. How to make sure that the guest rows are correct when you go to plant and hopefully do it uh, early. Uh, along with that, section control settings, how to make the rows turn on and turn off correctly. And third, uh, it's not documenting. Blue coverage is not showing up. And because blue coverage isn't showing up, uh, you're not sure if it's documenting. So we're going to try to address those three issues. The first one I want to point out is the uh, measurements. Uh, getting the measurements correct is really important. As you'll notice for this screen, I like to recommend that we do a complete measurement along tape all the way from the center of the receiver to back here where the seed hits the ground. Once you have that measurement, now we're going to break that apart and we're going to put it into the display under the four measurements. The first one being from the center of the receiver to the axle. The second one is from the axle to the pivot point. There are three options here. You could be the draw bar, you could be the, the, uh, the three point hitch, or the one I like to recommend is the pivot point on the planter. That is going to give you a better representation of how things are turning in the field. I want to point out here, tractor measurements, these first two are in inches whereas the implement is in feet. So now we've got the pivot point from the planter. Let's go from here. Letter A is a measurement from the pivot point of the planter to the front of the planter. Then letter B is from the front of the planter to where the seed hits the ground. That's important because the picture doesn't makes it look like it's the back of the planter. It's not. It's you, It's the point where the seed hits the ground. Again, all of the planter or implement measurements are in feet. And this is the way it looks on your screen. You have the machine, which is a tractor, and the implement number one, which would be the planter. Oftentimes, implement number two is blank. So you're going to have your measurements here. This first screen shows the measurement of the machine, which is a tractor. Basically, I want you to understand that this is the machine. Implement one is the planter. It may have an implement two, but that doesn't mean you're pulling another implement. That's going to be blank. So let's go ahead and put the change offsets button, and you'll get this screen right here. This screen is where we put our measurements in inches. The letter A, which is the receiver offset, is always going to be zero on the tractor unless the receiver is positioned other than in the middle of the tractor. So I don't want to see measurements there for offset. We'll talk about that later. Again, in inches, put in the measurements and make them add up that long measurement we made initially. So now we're on the implement. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to hit change offsets and we'll get this screen. You'll notice that it's in feet. A is the me measurement from the pivot point to the front of the planter. B is from the front of the planter to the where the seed hits the ground. And D is going to be what we call the uh, control point or where the planter pivots as it's turning a corner. All right, the first thing I want you to do now, you got into the field. And by the way, all of this can be done way before it's time to plant. So I'm going to recommend that you do this early. We need to calibrate the TCM. We've been talking about this for years, but it's still important. One thing about the new 6000 receiver is they were recommending that we do a figure eight two times before we do the regular calibration. 
there's been some reports of improvement even on the 3000, but mostly I wanted to point this out to improve your TCM calibration, turn a figure eight several times before you do the regular calibration. You want to calibrate this thing anytime the receiver has been unplugged or uh, at the beginning of the season. Why not give it a go uh, before the season starts? So now we're going to the field. And I want to point out you do not need to do this right by the lane road where you're going to be seeing any kind of mistake that might be happening throughout the whole year. Save yourself some trouble and go to the back 40 somewhere and start doing this. You, By the way, you can leave the vacuum off with your planter. Don't need to plant seed. So you can do this any time ahead of planting corn. So what I want you to do is find a nice spot where you can make some marks in the ground and drive three passes, long passes, passes that are long enough to where the uh, auto track will stabilize. Once you've done that, what I want you to do is to have the uh, narrow guess row of what you put your attention on. So it's right here. Go and measure several places along the row. This is going to give you a bit of an average to give you an idea just what kind of guess row. And I want you to always go with the narrow guess row. So now we stop, we get out, we measure. In this particular case, we want 30 inch guess rows, but it measures 26. Well, we have four inches of adjustment that's needed. So the idea that I want you to do is Take that four inches and divide it in half because we're going to make half of the measurement change or the adjustment on one pass and half on the other. So the number we're going to enter in is two. And we're going to do that in letter C of the implement offsets. Now, the next question that always comes up, which uh, side of the planter do we move the circular arrow? Always put the planter toward the narrow side. If you measure the narrow side and put the planter toward the narrow side, it's going to work. This is one of those things that doesn't really make sense, but just do it that way and it will work instead of spending half a day trying to get your uh, guess row set correctly. Next thing that comes into play, and these measurements that we did earlier are really important because of uh, section control adjustments. So the first thing let's do, let's talk about the turn off and turn on times. This is basically the amount of time it takes for the planter to release the seed and it hits the ground, or in the turn off, the amount of time it takes to stop. So it's going to take a little bit longer to turn on than turn off, but it's not going to be a lot of an amount. These amounts I use to mainly get it to be even coming into the headland and going out of the headland. It does not like a large discrepancy between these numbers, so keep them short. We'll make some adjustments in a little bit. So once we've done that, we're going to go to overlap settings. What comes up normally on your coverage on the bottom here is minimize skip. But I want you to do something a little differently here. I want you to change that to percent overlap. Now as you make a pass, and you stop and you get out and dig and see where the seed is, you might notice that you need to make a change. Well, now that we've got our turn on and turn off times consistent going in and going out, we can make a percent overlap adjustment here and change both of them at the same time. It starts out at 100%, but if you notice on this screen, I set it to 50%. Go back and we'll see the change. At 100%, you can look at the picture to the right, and it will make a change that will simulate what you're wanting to have done. It's a way to double check yourself before you uh, uh, make the change. The next question that comes up often is it's not documenting or blue coverage isn't uh, working. So I want you to hit the document button, the piece of paper with a pencil. And let's look through all of our settings on here. First of all, of course, you need to have the client farm in the field and the task is planning. And by the way, put in the crop season. It's important to keep track of it by the crop season. 
The crop season changes right after harvest. Anything you do after harvest is for the next year. So we'll look at the top here, and we have corn and 1034-0. We have two products that we are documenting. One of them is through the planter, and the other is uh, could be just a straight rate. But I want to make sure that we fill things in here. Seed type. You might take a note here. Anytime you see a little dot to the left of the uh, title, that's a required uh, bit of information that needs to happen in order to get documentation to happen correctly. So now we'll hit uh, put in a variety. Again, we have the little dots. Brand is, is uh, optional. A variety is mandatory. But these two are needed. So once we have that entered in, hit accept. And now we're going to go and check our work. This is the page I will take you to if you call the RSC. If we go to diagnostics, and it's up here in the view, it'll probably say GPS, but I want you to select recording. We're going to then go to the operations properly defined right down here. If it says corn and yes, and 1034 or O oh, and yes, everything is done correctly and it should document. If it says no, you need to go back to your screens and check to see what was left out. I'm hoping that some of these things will help uh, when you go to plant this year. And if you have questions, don't hesitate to call the RSC, and we will see if we can help. Thanks.